If swimmers want to create speed in any stroke, they have to create a lot of propulsion. That's certainly true of underwater kicking, just like it is when swimming on the surface. However, swimmers are going to have to use a little bit different strategies because they can only use the legs rather than the arms. Regardless, the principles are the same. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how elite underwater kickers create a lot of propulsion with their kicking. Hi everyone, Andrew here, helping you help your swimmers go faster. To create speed underwater, swimmers have to use as big a surface area as they can. They want to kick through as long a range of motion as possible. And finally, they want to execute with building leg speed throughout each kick. If swimmers can execute those three key skills, they're going to create a lot of propulsion underwater, which is going to help them go fast underwater. So let's check it out and see how elite swimmers, so let's check it out and see how elite swimmers are creating a lot of propulsion underwater by using a large surface area, using that surface area for a long range of motion, and by accelerating foot speed. First things first, swimmers have to use their entire foot and as much of their lower leg to move water as possible. If they can't get everything moving backwards and they can't orient the leg backwards, they're going to struggle to create a big surface area to move water with. And obviously, the feet aren't going to be as effective as the arms at creating propulsion with each kick. However, the more effective they can be by creating a bigger surface area, the faster swimmers are going to be able to go. So if we watch this swimmer here on the right, you can see as she sets it up right there, you can see how the ankles are bending backwards. They're facing backwards, and she's going to use that whole foot and some of her lower leg to create propulsion. You can see that they stay backwards, and she's going to fling that water backwards with that kick. So if we watch with the next kick, it's going to be the same thing. That whole lower leg is facing backwards, and the swimmer is going to flick water backwards. And so with each kick, as big as possible, given the constraints of human anatomy, and then using that to kick water backwards to help her go forwards. So big surface area, the feet are pointed backwards, and that's creating a lot of propulsion because she's getting more water with each kick. So next up, it's a matter of range of motion. And so if we watch here, so the feet are going to start moving water backwards from here, and they're going to move water backwards all the way through so you can see the foot flick through right there. And so that's a pretty big range of motion from here all the way through to there. If the swimmer stopped the kick short right there, they're not going to get as much as if they kick all the way through. And likewise, if they don't set it up early, they're not going to get as much of a kick as well. And so making sure that the swimmer kicks all the way through is really important. And if you can see here, her feet, her legs are in front of her hips, and that's going to indicate that she's used a really large range of motion, which means she's going to get as much out of each kick as possible. So setting up a big surface area and then holding that surface area all the way through the kick is going to be really important. So the next key skill is accelerating the feet. So there's not a whole lot of speed here, and then boom, it happens really fast. She really gets the feet moving forward and gets the feet moving forward in front of the body. So patience with the kick, relatively speaking, and then boom, there's an acceleration at the end of the kick. So the three key elements, so the three key elements are big surface area. You can see the feet are oriented backwards there. Big range of motion. She kicks all the way through right there. And then as she kicks right there, there's an acceleration of the kick. There's an acceleration of the feet towards the end of the kick cycle. So three really important skills, and they all add up to more propulsion. So we'll take a look at another swimmer here and we'll see the same dynamics. So as he sets up the kick right here, you can see that whole leg, that whole lower leg is facing backwards. And then as he really gets the kick rolling, you can see the feet and the ankles really start to bend backwards so that the feet can move water backwards for as long as possible. And so again, really great surface area right there. The whole foot is facing backwards and that's gonna create a ton of propulsion. You can see it again with the setup here. The whole leg is in position to create propulsion, and then the whole foot is really going to be used to create a lot of propulsion. So big surface area means more propulsion for each kick. But it's not just about the surface area, it's about the range of motion. And we see there, the swimmer is going to kick through, and the feet are going to come through the center line of the body, and that's going to create a lot more propulsion because the swimmer is able to use a more effective range of motion. So again, the feet end up way in front of the body, they create a lot of propulsion because he's using a full range of motion and he's holding that effective kick, creating a lot of pressure, a lot of propulsion with each kick, and then, and then keeping that rolling through the entire kick. So big range of motion is really important as well. And then lastly, there's going to be an acceleration of the kick as the feet come through. So right there, the foot speed really picks up. The second half of the kick, there's patience, and then boom, there's an acceleration. 
patience, and then there's an acceleration. And so with that kick through the accelerating foot, they're creating more pressure on the water, which means more speed and more propulsion with each kick. So by creating a big surface area, using that surface area for a long range of motion, and then accelerating throughout that surface area, there's going to be a lot of pressure moving water backwards through a long range of motion. And that's ultimately going to result in a lot of propulsion, which means more speed. One more example here, and we see here, the foot is facing backwards there, is kicking through, and that's going to create a big surface area to kick with. So right there, that foot is facing backwards as much as possible, and then he's kicking all the way through. And so again, big surface area is going to create a lot more propulsion. And with this swimmer, he's also doing a really good job of kicking with a full range of motion. So the kick really starts in earnest here, and he's kicking all the way through with the feet well in front of his body, creating a lot of propulsion over a big range of motion. So setting it up back here, and then kicking all the way through and creating a lot of propulsion because there's such a big range of motion. Now, if we watch the acceleration, patience, and then boom, the legs really snap through the end of the kick. And that acceleration is going to help the swimmer create more pressure on the water and create more propulsion. And so just like our other underwater kickers, it's big surface area, it's big range of motion, and it's accelerating foot speed. If swimmers can execute those three skills, they're going to create a lot of propulsion. If you want to learn more about how to actually help swimmers improve these skills, check out the video below.